How many are we here? 200, 250? Okay. Uh, do you have an idea about the population of the world? How many people around the world? Seven billion? And since the Big Bang, how many people on Earth? Number? 107 billion people. 107 billion brains. And these brains were thinking for years, centuries, thousands of years, and produced a lot of things. Among these things, what I call the art of technology. And one of the best things this 107 billion brains created is this robot. This robot is the state of the art in terms of surgery. This robot is able to target a single cell and remove the tumor from the brain without harming any other tissue. It's very precise and very accurate. This is the nice thing human can produce. The dark side is this. Absolutely, exactly the same technology is used for both systems. One is for saving lives. The other one is for bombing and killing people. You know that this guy is autonomous. He can decide where to bomb and who to kill without any human intervention. So it's an autonomous machine. And it can do this because it has an embedded artificial intelligence. You know that this topic is very hot these days. And we have some fears and some hopes for this topic. OK, let's focus on the hopes and see how things evolved until arriving to this stage. Actually, from the beginning of humanity, we can see that the uh, mechanical or the muscle activity is lowering down. On the contrary, we use more and more our brains, which is normal, to have a better life and to simplify our lives. The problem these years is this. Our brain activity is almost dropping because we have assistance. All of us have smartphones which do many things instead of us. So we think less. And this is again uh, because of some kinds of artificial intelligence. The computer is the exactly like a brain. Hmm. Yes and no. OK, let's see how the brain works. And to illustrate this, I will take, OK, let's take the touch. You know that we have hundreds or thousands of mechanoreceptors on our fingertips. And these mechanoreceptors are a sort of pressure sensor. So if I push here, this mechanoreceptor will generate an electrical signal. And this signal is sent somewhere here saying, oh, there is something happening. This is what we call stimulation. The artificial brain is based on an object called artificial neuron. And the artificial neuron works exactly the same. We have some excitation at the entrance. And we cook this information in a black box. And then we generate, after cooking, we generate an output. The meaning of this, the input is the sensation or the exit of the mechanoreceptors. And these signals are sent to the brain, but not all the signals are sent in the same way. So for the signal one, first box, we just take 
a part of it, a ratio of W1, the second one, W2, etc. So we don't send the signals as they are produced, but we take just a part of it. The artificial brain is similar to our brain, so it has a lot of neurons and completely interconnected. And what we do is we take the measurements or the stimulation from outside and we send it through the network to the exits. Imagine you have um, a signal at the entrance, let's say an image with the face of someone else, and you want at the exit the name of this person. How to do? We have to teach this machine how to recognize people. So we take the signals from the input and try to send it to the output. And using the W, all these links. The system will answer something else. Maybe it's wrong. And if it is wrong, we have to correct. So the, we have to tell him, oh, be careful. Your signal or your response is wrong. So we send back the error to the entrance. And we will do the same back and forth. And this is exactly how our brain works. This is how we learn things. One of the use of this machine is what we call decision making. I took the example of the person or recognizing the face of a person or here to recognize or to say, oh, this photo contains the face of a person and the face of an animal here, a camel, for instance. So we teach the system to answer according to the things we present. We feed him with some, for, some information at the entrance and we tell him, okay, you have to answer this. And after sending the error back and forth, the system is able to recognize. So the system now uh, has learned and is able to make such a recognition. We can generalize not only recognition, but we talk about decision making. Here, recognizing is a decision making, and we can apply this to a lot of domains. The good thing is that we can reverse the paradigm. Meaning that here, for instance, I can tell the system, please draw a camel for me. And we use exactly the same system as before. And the system is able to generate synthetic photo of camels. It can do uh, the recent results um, of research show that such systems can generate music. You just ask, I want jazz and the system will generate jazz music. I was talking last week with the, a friend of mine who is a journalist, and he's dreaming about a system that can write articles for him. And it happened, actually. The, last week, uh, a software was published in the US that is able to generate text. But it was immediately removed because it's dangerous. Now. This is the top. So we saw that if we feed the machine with data, it can learn. And it can generate synthetic things. Now the machine can learn by itself. So we don't need to feed the machine with what we call the big data. We can show just an example. And the system actually can find the solution by itself. And it's very similar to people sleeping. And during dreams, and this is actually in babies, they try to simulate the, uh, the walking. During the day, they are crawling. They, saw, they see other people walking and say, oh, I have to do the same. So during night, they simulate walking. And we have in our brain an area here called uh, neuraminos that play this role. So the, we have a machine that we call this bio-inspired, copy the, um, 
Yeah, could be the nature, because it's optimal to do good things. Now, what is happening, actually, when we create such, such machines? What we do, we are actually transferring the knowledge. When we teach the machine, when we feed the machine with knowledge, we transfer our knowledge. This is good. We are teachers, so we teach. But the problem is we don't know what is happening. We are creating black boxes, and we are unable to explain the numbers that these black boxes contain. So we have two issues, actually. One is that lose the, somehow the knowledge, because we put it and we cannot explain uh, this uh, lost. And the second thing is that phenomena is not reversible, meaning that if we have a black box, we cannot recreate the origin knowledge. So it is lost. You know that AI is nowadays present in all areas. It's covering everything. And maybe we have to think about a new model for the use of AI um, in the society. Oh, sorry. Stand up. Okay. What do you think? I don't know much about artificial intelligence. Can you tell me the story about the school in Dianne? The school in Oh. Yes. The school in Xianlin. This is what I see every morning when I'm drinking my espresso. Traffic jam near a school. So it's the hottest spot in terms of pollution in Xianlin. And at the same time, I said, oh, we can use AI to solve this kind of problems. Because the you know, pollution and the uh, it's the, a big problem these days, and we have absolutely to take care of our planet. And I think, and I hope, and I will do all my possible to push the use of AI in such direction. Thank you. Okay, let's go. Are you okay? I am happy. Ooh. Okay, let's go. Let's go.